Hey there, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this video, I'm going to share with you something I thought I shot a long time ago, and it seems like I never did, how to name your startup, some, some tips and tricks. And be sure to stay at the end where I'm going to share with you how to get access to my idea to exit mini course. If you're thinking of starting a software company, you're going to want to get access to this training. So the other day I was riding in an Uber with my buddy Kevin and uh, I said, hey man, you working on a new startup? And he's like, actually I am. I was like, awesome, what's the name of it? And he's like, well, I'm toying with a few different names. I haven't really figured out the one that I'm, that I'm settled on. I was like, oh cool, so you're trying to name the startup? It's like, yeah. I was like, and then he goes, so do you have any ideas? And it was funny because I realized I had never shot a video on probably one of the first and most important steps in building a company, which is naming your startup. So I started walking him through uh, the different things that, I was, that I've always kind of done for my different companies, from Clarity to Flowtown to Spheric. And look, I'm not saying that I got it right. I'm just saying there is a process. And I've, you know, as an investor in over 40 other companies and have talked to literally 5,000 plus other tech companies, I feel like I've got a unique angle and approach. So I'm gonna share with you in this video some tips and tricks that I shared with Kevin that he took action on right away and um, that are not obvious. That's the key. I do not want to share things that are obvious with you. So here are five strategies for naming your startup. Number one, align with your customer. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what is whoever you're serving as a core customer or focus is, does this name hurt you? You know, if I was building a security company and I called my, my startup weaksauce.com, you know, it's like, hey, welcome to our, the, the future of firewalls and we are weaksauce.com. I mean, it would just not work. And I think sometimes I meet these, these founders that are going after mid-market enterprise customers and they've got these playful, kiddish, Fisher Price names. And I get it when you're doing consumer, that makes sense, or even SMB software, but it does not make sense when you're trying to go after the Fortune 2000. So just think about aligning your name with your customer's expectations or sentiments. Number two, don't be too specific. You know, one of my friends was sharing with me their, uh, one of the ideas for the new company, one of them was Auto BDR. Well, BDR stands for business development rep, which pretty much has the customer name or the type of customer you serve in the name, which to a lot of people would be like, well, that makes a lot of sense because then people know exactly what we do. Well, yes, but in the early days of technology and startup, what I've discovered is there is like a 90% chance that the idea and the customer you focus on when you launch is not the product or customer segment that allows you to eventually succeed in business. So the last thing you want to do is just pigeonhole yourself into a very specific name that doesn't allow you to explore the optionality of the product or the markets that you might be able to serve. Number three, outcome driven. So what I mean by this is the best names are the ones that essentially communicate the benefit or outcome that a customer has using your product, okay? And this is where I feel like I got lucky with Clarity, and yes, it was Clarity.fm was my previous company, and uh, but I was lit, it was like a late night coding session, and then all of a sudden I was like, hey, I really need to buy a domain for this product project I was working on, and I just found this like Clarity.fm. I was like, oh, it's broadcasting, it's voice. Clarity is kind of what the essence of getting advice from other people over the phone would provide, so I just called it Clarity. And what has been amazing to see that go on is that people keep saying like man, I really got a lot of clarity from that call, clarity, clarity. It's like, they can't even say like, you know, I got a mentor because he gives me clarity or I need to find somebody to help me get clarity. Like all of a sudden the name ties back to your product and solution. It's like one of the best things you could possibly do. So just think about, you know, what is the outcome or the, the feeling or the benefit that the customer will have by using your product and use that name. It also allows it to be broad enough for you to play around with it. Think about PayPal, right? It's like, you know, initially it was Palm Pilot um, money transfer, but then they realized it's like, well, that's not really going to work. There's not a lot of people that have Palm Pilots. It required you installing, you know, encryption software on both ends, and they kind of went a little bit further and discovered email money transfer, right? So I think that names that allow you to 
Um, focus on the outcome and the benefit the customer is gonna derive allows you to really explore the solution to get them there and really drives the mental movie that the customer makes in their head around your product and their problem. And that to me is like the ultimate. When, when a customer has a problem and they've and you your name of your business has entered in and labeled, like when I have this problem, this is a company solving that, that's when it becomes super powerful. Number four, don't buy the dot com. I have so many entrepreneurs reaching out and saying, hey, I've got this new company, here's what it's called, that I can buy the dot com for like $75,000, should I do that? My answer, especially if you're starting off and cash is tight, I do not think you should invest more than really five to, on the high end, maybe $10,000 for a really good domain, which is probably gonna be rare. Because at the end of the day, people are going to discover your business through links. They're gonna, it's gonna be word of mouth, it's gonna be from you marketing, they're gonna click an ad, they're gonna find a blog post, they're gonna, they're gonna read about you, they're gonna see you speak on a stage, they're gonna hear about you in a podcast and somebody's gonna link up your website. So what's more important is nail the name, find a domain that makes sense. I mean, .coms are still good, like get something or this now, and you know, there's a bunch of different variations that you can find online that people are using today. But to me, it's like nail the outcome or the benefit and then just add whatever else you need on the domain to get it to work. And look, the truth is, is the .ios, the .fms, the .tvs, the .whatever, you can go there initially and eventually if you grow enough, you can buy the .com, but I just don't think it matters anymore. I think that most of the traffic you're gonna get is gonna be linked and in those link, the domain is gonna be already referenced so you don't need to get a very expensive .com for your startup. Number five, have meaning. If you are going to build this company, it will consume your life and it would be awesome if you could come up with a name that also has a deeper meaning to you or to the team or to the problem that you wanna solve, the right you wanna see solved or the right you wanna fix in the world, right? So think about like, is there a meaning behind this name? Even if it doesn't match or, or kind of accomplish the benefit driven or outcome driven naming, I think it's more important that for you, as long as people can spell it, I see sometimes people use, you know, foreign words in other languages and for them, it has incredible meaning around their heritage and their, their lineage and all these things, but it is really hard to spell or it's not obvious how to even discover it. Like if I hear the name and I can't, you know, phonetically go to Google and search and hopefully get it somewhat right that I discover your website, then it's just gonna be a total fail. So yes, have meaning. Yes, try to connect meaning to it. Maybe take some different names of people and put them together. And because I will tell you, like if this succeeds, that will be your rally cry. That, that name will be everywhere. It's, it's gonna drive you, you're gonna wake up, you're gonna be you know, not being able to sleep thinking about your company and figuring things out. And you want a name that, that has real deep meaning because it will consume your life. So real quick recap on some tips and tricks for naming your startup. Number one, align with your customer. Number two, don't be too specific. Number three, outcome driven names. Number four, don't pay for the dot com. And number five, ensure that it has meaning. As I mentioned at the beginning, I wanna share with you an incredible resource called the Idea to Exit mini course. It's essentially a three video series where I unpack how to come up with the right software idea, how to pre-sell it to your customer base, to fund your development, to then hire the dev and technical team to build it, and then onward to eventually, if you want, to exit the business, you can click the link below to get access to that training. That is a gift to you, um, just because if you're here trying to name your startup, you're probably looking for tips on how to scale and grow. And if you like this video, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel. If there's anybody you care about that you feel that this video can serve, feel free to share it with them directly. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. Tips, tricks, and other things that start with T. <laughs>